Hey you guys, how are you? Really quickly, this video is for fourth and fifth grade. If you are a third grade or younger, head to my channel, go to my videos um, and find your video with your grade on it. And it's lesson number three this week. Um, also, if you go to my playlist, there is a playlist with your grade and it has all of your videos in it. So you can find lesson one, two, and three located there. So fourth and fifth grade, we are gonna start out with a rhythm of the week. And I kind of went with a rhythm of the week, which is a little more challenging than we have been doing. So I included 16th notes in this, and I think I wanna try including 16th notes pretty regularly because I think, I think you can do them. So we went over 16th notes last week, so let's start here. So I wanna start out with, we're in the same time signature, we're in four four still, which means there are only allowed to be four beats in my measure. So we're gonna start by writing the counts underneath. Don't get overwhelmed by everything going on in here. If we just take it one note head at a time, it'll really simplify it for us. So let's start with the first thing in the measure. The first thing in the measure is always going to be beat one, always, now, and forever. So I'm gonna put a one here underneath my first eighth note. Now, I can't put beat two here, because if I did beat two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that'd be incorrect. I'm only allowed four beats in my measure. So because this eighth note is one beat broken into two sounds, I can't put two here. I'm gonna put my and here. I'm gonna use a plus sign for that. The and always goes on the second eighth note. So I've got beat one totally done. So what beat's gonna come next? Beat two. So two is gonna go underneath this quarter note. So this quarter note, I don't need anything else. It takes up that whole beat. Here's where things get interesting. My 16th notes are when one beat gets divided into four sounds. So I can't just do the next beat and an and. I've got to put more. So let's do a quick review. The first 16th note is going to get the beat. I'm going to put the number here. So I've got beat one. I've got beat two. So next is going to be beat three. So three comes first. My second note is going to get an E. We, we talked about that last week, it gets an E. My third 16th note is where I put my and. So I'm gonna put my plus sign here. And my last 16th note actually gets a weird one. It gets the uh sound. We actually use a lowercase a for that. Again, I know that it doesn't really make sense because lowercase a does not say uh, uh but this is how we do it in music, even though it's kind of goofy. And then my last quarter note is going to get what beat? Going to get beat four. Yeah. And that's the end of it. Okay. So don't allow this whole measure to become overwhelming. Take it one little step at a time. Okay. That's sometimes just the best way to do things. And especially when we're getting new rhythms like this, that's how we can tackle it the best. So just start at the beginning and move slowly. Okay. Move slowly. So this rhythm is actually really cool sounding. So spoken, it sounds like this. Ready, go. One and two, three and a four. That two and the four are almost gonna feel really long because they're quarter notes. And when you're dealing with eighths and sixteenths, those quarters start to feel really big because the eighths and the sixteenths are so much faster. So let's speak it together. Will you try it with me? Nice and slow. Ready, go. One and two, three e and a four. Let's do it again. Ready, go. One and two, three e and a four. Nice job. Can we try, can you find a surface near you to tap with your fingers so we can tap this? So use both of your fingers and you're gonna tap on each count, each count and each syllable. So it should sound like this, I'm gonna use one hand and you can't see it, but you can hear it. It'll sound like this. One and two, three and a four. Can you try that with me? Ready, go. One and two, three and a four. Again, right now. One and two, three and a four. Nice job. See, these rhythms get really exciting. I love 16th notes because they just make the music so much more fun uh, to play, uh, to, to sing, everything. So these are really good notes to be working on, especially fifth grade. You guys are gonna get these a ton next year in band and fourth graders next year, we're gonna be dealing with them a lot with buckets. That's what helps make our bucket drum music so cool. So really nice job with this. 
Okay, so you guys did an awesome job last week. Thank you so much. I forgot to talk about your percussion assignment last week that you guys did. Um, it was really fun to see what you guys uh, feedback uh, from listening to all the percussion instruments. Overwhelmingly, you guys thought the drum set was the coolest, which I'm not totally surprised. Uh, I love the drum set. I uh, it's one it's really cool because. Um, it's got so many different things going on, but that actually makes it pretty difficult to play. Um, I've tried to play the drum set a few times and it's really, really, really hard. Uh, it's it's just got a ton of coordination. Your legs have to be going, your hands have to be going, and it all has to work together uh, to really create a fun beat. Uh, so they're pretty cool. So with Scott Joplin, I got to read a bunch of your guys's uh, you're describing words for ragtime, and that was really great. You guys did a really nice job thinking about that. And overall, overwhelmingly, I saw that people were kind of feeling that ragtime. Some of you were like, maybe feeling the ragtime, that syncopation. I think that you are feeling it, but it might be just a little hard to recognize because it's a new thing. So, but really nice job with that. So today what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab my whiteboard. Today we're going to do really quickly is we're going to do a treble clef note name review. And then I want to talk about bass clef today because it's really important to know and, and bass clef is totally new um, and it uh, might seem like a lot at first, but don't worry about it. You're going to get it. You're going to rock. Okay. So the first thing is we're going to just do a quick review of our treble clef. You know these note names. You guys have been working on them with me for years, uh, but let's just do a quick review. I've got my treble clef on my staff. And really quickly, let's just review the line versus the space. This seems to be one of the most confusing parts of this. Once we kind of get this down, the rest of it falls into place. So really quickly, a line is a note that sits directly over top of a line. You guys know my favorite comparison is it looks like a marshmallow on a stick. Okay, and the weather's warming up. You know what I'm gonna be doing, campfires, and I'm gonna be making s'mores because they are like my favorite summertime treat. So marshmallow on the stick. So any if the note is right over top of the line, it's a line, okay? So if a note is not, let's say it's in between, it's sandwiched in between my two, my two lines, this is a space. So spaces look like uh, marshmallows that have been roasty toasted and are being put in between graham crackers and some chocolate. Uh, for a s'more. So that's our that's our visual difference here. We have to be able to know the difference between these two in order to be able to tell our note names, okay? So for example, I need to be able to know that really quickly, that note is a, a line, a line, because the line is going right through the note like a marshmallow on the stick. Uh, this note is a A space because it's between between the lines like a like a like a marshmallow between two graham crackers. Okay, so when, once we kind of know that, we can move forward with the treble clef note names. So really quickly, I'm gonna do, and it's easier for me just to do in front of me, and then I will show you. We have five lines and four spaces in the treble clef, and we've been practicing this for a while, but reviewing is really good because it just helps so much. All right, there we go. So we have our five lines and our four spaces. Each one of these notes has a name and it's a letter of the alphabet. Let's start with our lines. Our lines are, if you know them, same with me, E, G, B, D, F. E, G, B, D, F. The silly acronym that I have used for the last about seven years of my teaching is empty garbage before dad flips. Okay, just to help us remember, it's a silly one. The sillier, the better. Our spaces spell a word, which makes them really easy to remember. F, A, C, and E. So the spaces spell face. It's really nice because they rhyme. It's really easy to remember that way. So these are gonna be really important. Fifth grade for next year when you're in band, a lot of the instruments use these treble clef note names. And fourth grade, they're important for you because you're gonna be using them for recorder next year. They use these note names. You don't have to learn a new set of notes, you just have to know these, okay? 
Just have to know these. So one other set of notes that I want to start, this is pretty much the last set that you have to learn ever, is the bass clef. So the bass clef is for instruments that use, uh, that are basically low sounding. So instruments like um, the, the trombone, the baritone, the tuba, um, the piano uses bass clef and the, uh, like, uh, some percussion instruments use bass clef as well. And there's definitely more, uh, like the string bass uses bass clef, the cello uses bass clef too. So there's quite a few instruments that use bass clef. So, but the bass clef is similar, but different. It's the same basic principle. Let me draw my bass clef up here as neatly as I can off to the side. So, the bass clef is usually below the treble because it's lower, right? So same thing, I've got one, two, three, four, five lines and four spaces in the middle. So give me just a second to draw those out and then we're gonna go over the note names for those. You're gonna find that it's eerily familiar, very similar. It's almost like they've just shifted down the notes, just barely. All right, so here they are drawn out just like the treble clef, they just have slightly different names. So from bottom to top with my lines in the bass clef, I have G, B, D, F, and A. I can't tell, get my arm out of the way there. G, B, D, F, A. Now, I don't have a good acronym for this one. The one I heard growing up was the good boys do fine always. And I found that one, that one I've heard forever. So part of your job today is going to be creating up, creating your own ac silly acronym for this. But before we do get to that, let's do the spaces. The spaces are A, C, E, G. A, C, E, G. So a couple of things, some people, uh, I've growing up, we would just remember the word ace and then a G on the end. Another acronym that I've heard is all cows eat grass. And that one works too. So here is your job for this week. Your job for this week is to, I want you to make sure that you know treble clef. That's my priority for you right now. Looking forward to bass clef. Your job for this week is to create silly acronyms for the lines and for the spaces. So that means that each letter is going to have a word, like the original good boys do fine always or all cows eat grass. I want you to try to create your own. And like I said earlier, the sillier the better because I find that the goofier they are, the better we remember those type of things. Um, I When I was remembering or trying to learn when I was taking piano lessons, a long time ago, I had to learn the order of this goofy, it was just a really weird order of something I had to remember. And I and I remember creating this acronym and this like picture in my head um, about five minutes before my piano lesson because I was like, oh, my piano teacher's gonna ask me and I don't remember. So I remember sitting out there like, okay, come up with this acronym really fast. And I actually created this whole like picture in my mind and I never forgot them, I still remember. It's silly, but I'll have to tell you more about that later once I talk more about the sharps and the flats. Uh, otherwise, it just makes a whole, makes no sense at all. So I will talk more about that later. So, so the bass clef is really important as well. Even if fifth grade, especially if you're thinking, well, Mrs. Akins, I'm, I'm playing the flute next year. So why do I need to look at bass clef? You never know. They're really good to learn especially since they are on the piano as well, um, on just mo lots of instruments. You never know where life will take you. And having some familiarity with the bass clef is really important. Um, fourth grade as well, you might be thinking, I only need to worry about this for right now. Bass clef is just super important as well because again, it's used everywhere. So same, same, my same response to both grades. Uh, it's super important to learn. And if you can make a silly acronym now and you start learning it now, it's going to be just like the back of your hand in a couple years. So, so that's that. That's this week. So make sure that you're feeling good about the treble clef and then move on to the bass clef. And I want you to create those goofy acronyms. So if you go into the comments, there is a Google uh, form link where you can go in and you can type your acronyms in for me so I can see them. And I'm super excited to read these this week. I cannot wait. Hopefully, I'm hoping that some of them will make me laugh. 
Uh, and uh, I'm hoping, I think you guys can come up with some super creative things. So if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, send me an email or a message, a uh, comment through uh, Google Classroom, and I can get back to you. Um, other than that, have an awesome weekend, and I will talk to you later.